Mighty Nas Street Beast. Hey, go subscribe, ring that bell for notification, man. We're here. We just had a big day of fights. Um, got a guy that came all the way to Detroit from Detroit to come out here and do an interview for my prison talk station, man, for the re-entries in uh, Virginia and the federal system. So um, I'm going to let him introduce himself. I don't know much about him. I don't know this guy. I wasn't locked up with him. Like I said, he's from Detroit. His name is Lee Jaeger Man on YouTube. He's got his own YouTube, I mean, face, Facebook. He's got his own YouTube station, and he's going to give you the shout outs on all that stuff. Uh, he's going to, uh, he's basically going to tell you a good story, man. I just heard a lot of it before we even got on here and stuff, man. And um, he's got a little story to tell. So he drove a long ways to tell what he wants to tell. He wants to be seen on this thing. And uh, he reached out with me, and I, and I wasn't sure if he was even going to come all the way down here, man, but he did. So he's got the mic, and I'm going to let him do his thing, man. I appreciate that. Sure, brother. Appreciate you bringing me on, on here and giving me the opportunity. Absolutely. Uh, my name is Lee Yeager, man, on, on Facebook. And I'm a little nervous. If, just be patient here. <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, it takes time. <laughs> so, but no, I, I, what I came down here for is to, to meet Mighty Miles because I can I can give a lot of respect to what he's doing with the reentry program with the system. He's trying to give back to felons and ex-cons. And, and people need to get back into the world so the recidivism rate decreases and helps people get back on their feet. After basically being dead for how many ever years you're in the joint, because that's what you are, you're dead. People forget about you. Facts. So, so what I'm trying to do is I'm going to take my negative experience and turn it into a positive. It's like Mighty Mouse here, you know, which, you know, you, you got you to gotta take the initiative yourself or nobody's going to do it for you. You got to take the chance, make the change. My personal story, I wasn't a gangster. I wasn't a, a criminal, so to speak. I did a lot of crime. I, it wasn't my lifestyle. I knew a lot of people, whatever. I just hung out with the bad people, the bad crowd, you know, the elements. It happens. You start getting into drugs and alcohol and partying and all that shit, and people start dying off and this, that, or the other thing. So you see a lot of shit. And me being 50 years old now, this has been going on for a long time. It's time to stop. So I'm going to take my negative experience and put it to use and try and bring drug awareness and. and Trying to talk to you the camera at the same time. Bring, bring drug awareness to the system because there is no rehabilitation. It's just locking you up. I can only speak about Michigan, but I know it's pretty much across the board around the country. Nobody does anything but tell you what they're going to do and they never do it. So I think that ex cons like us, me, fortunately, didn't tell you this, but I expunged my phone. So I'm, I'm technically not, but neither here nor there. I'm still on paper. And, I'm a convict. So my experience, I want to use for drug rehabilitation instead of incarceration. Most people commit crimes, not because they're criminals, for the most part, when it comes to drug addiction. Drugs will make you do the craziest shit you'll ever do in your life. Just like Rick James used to say, cocaine's hell of a drug, right? So, you know, and we're just talking cocaine. We're not talking heroin. We're not talking the pills. We're not talking all this shit that people are addicted to, which evolves. So if I can gather up some stories from everybody around the country, because I'm, I'm trying to go everywhere I can to get people's history, right, to show that it's basically from the past, and they, they could benefit more from um, rehabilitation than incarceration. First of all, it saves the taxpayers lots of money, right? And get people off drugs, change their life. So that's my, my plan. My story is I got into this situation because I was addicted in a different way. I wasn't addicted to drugs. I used plenty. I was a party animal, social, all that. And my addiction was trying to keep my buddies out of trouble, try to keep me, you know, healthy, wealthy, and wise, you know, so, right. And I made a big mistake and I let a friend of mine 20 years at the time, talked me into doing him a favor against my better judgment because I didn't want some guilt to be uh, put on my shoulders like all my friends that have died. Man, I could have done something if I'd, have just, if I'd have just hung out with him that night. Well, you can't fix people and you can't lay guilt upon yourself, you know, so you got to address the root of people's issues to see if you can't change the future path. You know, you, you can cut the grass all day long you know, if the weeds are out there, but you got to take that root out weed or else it's gonna keep popping up. You lock them up, coming out, they're gonna get back. It's just a, a revolving door. door. Revolving door. And the revolving yep. door shit has gotta stop. Right. Somehow, some way. Because right. it's us 
versus them. Right. And you know who us are, and we know who them are. Yep. Yep. <laughs> us yep. is us, and them is, you know, the ones in, in state capitals pushing pens and, and making decisions for us all. So, how's the reentry? I don't mean to cut you off. How's no, no, the reentry up in um, in Michigan? Uh, do you guys do they have them reentry like for people coming back into prison and stuff like there, that? There is a reentry program. I didn't have to do it because I got my parole under the door. I had no history. Okay. You know, um, I, I had one misdemeanor before. And, and the felony that I got sent up the joint, up the river, in, right. and the reentry is there. But it's just a basic, you know. I don't even know what the program is. I can't it, speak upon it. But it, it's it, nothing it, significant. Okay. See, oh, in Virginia, they they bring you in like a year and a half before you go to. It's got like a step down type program thing, right, right. where you go from one dorm to another, and they spoke. You go to all these different classes and. You get all these different certificates and stuff like that, and they tell you what they can give you, uh, you know, help for the street. They do uh, right. these job fairs and stuff like that yeah. in the gym and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, the, our recidivism has gone down a little bit in Virginia um, over the years. I don't, I don't know about other states and stuff. And uh, but what y'all's, what y'all's situation up there? Does it, does it seem like crime is still increasing up there? Is it gone down? Is it staying stable? Well, it, or it, what? according to the records, I caught my number in two thousand and. and Two basically. Okay, mine was at 97. Yeah, and, and, and my number is a 418 number. Right now, they're probably flipped over to a million. Right. And that's 17 years. So, do the numbers. He's from a crime, high crime rate area. Detroit is, yeah. is, is, I don't know about all of Michigan. I know a couple of people from Ben Harbor where I deliver at in the tractor trailer. But Detroit is a bad city, man, crime wise. Um, one of the top in the nation. Um, you know, per yeah, capita, it's, big time. it's definitely one of the top in the nation. So, you know, it just goes to show, man, what their what their prison systems are doing. You know, Chicago, you know, not too far away, same thing. You know what I mean? Lots lots of crime, lots of issues that they got going on. Um, and a lot of people turn their back on those types of cities as far as just giving up on them. I came through Detroit probably two years ago, and the city looked like a ghost town. <laughs> like, looked, I mean, it's like pretty a third much, world country, yeah, right? they, unless you're downtown. They, they, yeah, I mean, they pretty much abandoned the entire city. You know right. what I mean? Uh, just, just abandoned everything. Old stores that were there, old houses that were there, projects everywhere. I mean, just there's nothing in the city, you know. I don't know how, like I said, all of Detroit is, but in Virginia, we're kind of close to, you know, we got a lot of cities out here and a lot of crime and stuff out here, but it's not 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 on the same level as as Detroit is. But um, over the years, like I said, our recidivism has gone down, you know, since they have started the reentry for the people that it helps, and um, you know, they got a select few people, man, in Virginia that. They offer a lot of things too that it that it will help, and, and a lot of people that they say that they'll do things for that they don't do. So that's one of the things, man, that we, we need to get to, man, in, in the reentry programs and the federal thing and the state. If you're gonna promise people stuff, you're gonna have people do these programs. You're gonna have them um, take these classes and stuff like that. You're gonna have these job fair people come in. Um, I can give you a lot of examples on certain jobs that said that they would hire felons and that they would give you jobs when right. you got out and. Yeah. Turn out to Blow be lies. Smoke up your ass. Yeah, a lot turned out to be lies. So you know, if you're gonna waste, you're gonna waste the time. You're gonna waste the money. You're gonna waste the federal money. You're gonna waste this and waste that. You know, stick true to uh, what you promised these inmates. What you're gonna do. And um, like I said, ours has gone down. They didn't give me much. I can't speak on a lot of this. A lot of the people in Virginia. Um, I don't know how it is up there. Well, the reentry program. I do believe it's uh, about a year program. So you gotta take this into consideration too that I, I was released in 2006 so a lot of things have changed there's no no more tobacco in the joints ours and I'm sure that's yep. you know ours knuckle and up central you know yep. because people is you know and toothbrushes just a simple toothbrush I knew that they were taking them from toothbrush down to the little put it on your finger thing yeah yeah, yeah. But, you know they're focusing on yeah, little stupid shit like that yeah I, I don't need I'm not gonna get into what people can do in there but you don't need a, a toothbrush you know, to, to hurt anybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Facts. Michigan, you got free weights. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, we do. you got you got sporting equipment. I've seen yeah. I've seen baseball bats up against guys' heads. You know, so it's not it's not a big issue. Yeah. But they they take small issues and make them a big issue instead of addressing the real thing, which is the blatantly I hate to say it, but it's corruption on the government's part on the prisons in Michigan. You know, as they they steal money. They're not putting it into the program. It's federally funded, but they're wasting it. And they're not helping anybody because you got to keep that revolving door open. You know, I think it's about time that we all put our heads together and we start thinking about how we can stop this instead of encouraging it and keeping the, the status quo. Right. Because it, it's bullshit. You know, this man was taken away from his family. I was taken away from my family. It's not a. It's not a picnic. At the end of the day, no matter what state you're in, prison's prison. And 
it's not a place where I would even want my worst enemy to be there, which would probably be the guy who sent me there in the first place, you know, because it's, it's not a pleasant place. So to try and change the things, like I said, we got to we got to take that step forward and right. the, the, the financing part of it. I don't even I'm trying. This is this is I'm starting to, to get my channel going so I can do a lot yeah, of give a give a stuff, shout out to your you station know. so you guys can check out a lot of what he's doing if you want to hear more from what he's <laughs> yeah. doing you know what i mean he can uh he can give you his station and stuff so you can go on there and check out what's going on up in the detroit systems and and whatever else he's doing yeah, on I, his station he's he's doing a lot of stuff for uh a lot of substance abuse things and stuff we had talked about so uh his station is going to be probably geared towards a lot of that for people that are going through substance abuse problems um i've had friends die before i even came home and I've had people just die recently, and I got friends that I used to fight with that can't get off of this stuff, and we were just talking about him today too. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's the same thing, man. It's such it's a strain sad. on the economy and a strain on yeah. the system, man. And instead of incarcerating these people, um, he was talking about giving them programs and different things that they can do to try to help them out instead of just throwing away, throwing them in there and throwing away the key pretty much. Um, giving these guys all this federal time and stuff like that on conspiracy acts and stuff like that and uh, pretty much wasting taxpayers money um, there's other outs there's other ways there's other ways to get get this done instead of just uh, throwing away the key on a lot of guys that just have a lot of issues you know that aren't actually out there doing violent crimes they're self-destructive crimes pretty much you know yeah, what I mean? that's what it is it's self self-inflicted torture like people have some some traumatic experience that happened to them no matter what age you could you could be 40 years old and have your loved one that was killed in 9/11 and you've never you know been a drug addict all your life but that traumatic experience is enough to trigger it at some point in time you know you could go out with your friend you know one night and say hey you know it's been two years man you know you come on out with us one and then so the, whoever the, the the widow or they have a couple of drinks and they realize that those couple of drinks made them feel a little better and not to 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 have the emotional attachment to what loss that they had or traumatic experience so what do they think they're going to do the next time? I'm going to give me a couple more drinks than you. Because that's where nope. it starts. Nope. And, and whether people realize it or not, my addiction, even though it wasn't drugs, was based upon my experiences as a youth and what I went through. So, And one thing I'm going to try and focus on is getting people therapy. It doesn't make you less of a man to, to go and seek therapy. I thought all my life that if I went to therapy or go see a psychiatrist, that meant I was fucking crazy. And that I was gonna put the, the straight jacket on, and I need to go right. we'll get to the rubber room. Right. But it, it, it's only gonna happen. I can tell you all day long that you need to go and get some some medical or some mental health therapy. Right. And it's, until you realize it, until you have your epiphany, you're gonna continue to to do what you're doing. Everybody right. has to have their own light bulb go off, and then they, when they realize that, they're gonna finally say, you know what, man, I wish I'd figured this out a long time ago. I I, I went to therapy when I was 42 years old and I'm not embarrassed to say it if you guys don't like it I don't care it's real I'm gonna talk real you want real talk this is the guy that's gonna give you some real talk I'm gonna give you some real talk why are you gonna sugarcoat anything and blow smoke up your ass you know what's the point so the whole the whole thing is is that people need to, to look inside themselves if they want to stop the vicious cycle and you got to also look to the younger ones that are looking up to you and stop that vicious cycle from the, the generations that are up and coming because it's you know it's like the old commercial where you know I, I, I snort cocaine so I can work more so I can work more hours so I can snort more cake yeah I've and heard it before <laughs> in the trucking system I'm right. gonna smoke meth so I can stay awake three or four days five yeah. days at a time you know it just yeah. ends up being like that but the, and the ironic thing is is that he's a truck driver too and I've been in the trucking business for yeah. you know, 30 30 years yeah. basically and so you know it. so so you know I'd, I'd like to personally give back in, in other ways as well as I've taught some friends how to drive semi and get their commercial right. you know license. And I've actually helped a lot of inmates that have yeah. came home get right. their CDL and, and stuff. It's it's a yeah. good business to get into. Yeah. You know you know you got to worry about a place a to live and, and make a good career. Yeah. You got a home behind you. You can yeah. drive around. And yeah. it, it, as long as you can leave the state off parole or whatever, yeah, but you eventually you know yeah. bide your time and you can do that. Yeah. But I've, I've taught more, and, and I'm willing to teach more. If, if I could progress and get this thing snowballed, I would love to, you know, give do them some. Give them a shout of your station. All right, yeah. I, I talk too much. Tell me to shut no, the fuck up. No, I, 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 I just don't want to miss. I, I just don't want us to miss your miss your no, my, on here. Yeah, my my channel on YouTube is Road to Prison, like a road. You know, it's kind of a double entendre. I got a road a ride to prison, a road to prison, and you know, hopefully you'll get a link on there. You can come follow me. I got. A, 
you know, I'm getting out there. I'm starting. I'm actually getting ready to um, put a rig together, a road rig. And I'll show you if you, you got some extra time. I'll give yeah. you a quick fill. But I'm putting a, an old moving van together. And I'm going to turn it into an RV slash rolling YouTube studio so I can go around okay. and, and interview people and get stories and, and, and accumulate them and maybe go to Lansing in Michigan and, and try to get some funding and some changes. That's all you can do, man. You got you to gotta put your nose to the grindstone. And I'm diving in that first. So that's all I can do. And if you want to hear some crazy fucked up prison stories, pardon my French, and <laughs> 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 my story for how I got to prison, you, you guys ain't going to believe some of the shit I can tell you. You wouldn't believe it if I didn't have it on paper, you know, or, yeah. or the pictures to prove it. Yeah. But, but anyways, I appreciate you giving for me sure. the time. It was, it was hey, a pleasure to meet you, man. man. And, y'all and, subscribe. Mighty Mouse Street Beach. Y'all subscribe to the stations. Hit his link. Subscribe. Ring them bells for the notifications. We got big fights uh, July 6th coming up at y'all. Peace. Mighty Later, Mouse. man. Mighty.